Hello there. Uh, my name's Spencer Allingham, and I'm the Technical Director at Conducive Technologies for the EMEA region. Um, I wanted to talk to you about databases. Um, I've been basically running uh, a series of tests on these two virtual machines with and without our Velocity software doing optimization of the uh, storage layer. And I wanted to show you the difference that it makes to things like SQL Server. So basically, I've got two virtual machines here. One's actually a clone of the other one. So they're both set up in exactly the same way or, or as close to being identical as I can possibly get them. They've got uh, a SQL database on both and a copy of HammerDB. Um, and if you wanted to run this test yourself, you can get that for free at hammerdb.com. What this does is it sets up the SQL database and in such a way that it would emulate um, an e-commerce type situation. So it sets up a number of warehouses. It uh, loads those warehouses with stock information and then sets up a number of users to effectively go onto the e-commerce website and, and browse through the stock and place orders and, and so on. And it measures how many SQL transactions per minute were able to be completed and how many orders were processed. So to see what difference our Velocity software makes, I've also, of course, installed Velocity onto both machines. But on this machine on the left, Velocity is active and it's running. You can see the, the Velocity service in a running state there. On this machine on the right, Velocity's actually stopped. It's not running. So on the machine on the right, Velocity can't provide any benefit. So the workload would run just the same as if Velocity wasn't there. And that means that all of the storage traffic is going to have to go out to the backend storage to be processed. Whereas over here, where we have Velocity installed, it will be reducing and optimizing the storage I.O. traffic so that the storage has to deal with less of a workload. And it also introduces a RAM caching technique so that a good percentage of the read I.O. traffic can be satisfied at the speed of RAM rather than the speed of the backend storage. Now, I should also mention that the backend storage in this case is very, very fast um, NVMe flash storage. So this is natively, even without velocity, this, this SQL database is, is going to run as fast as my hardware will possibly allow. Um, it should be, should be very, very fast. So what I'm going to do is run the test, and then I'll record the number of SQL transactions per minute and the number of orders processed per minute from these two VMs in these, in these columns here. I'm going to add them to the runs that I've already done previously. But for those of you that don't like sitting through lab tests, which <laughs> uh, I can understand, I'm personally, I'm weird and I love doing this stuff, but not everybody likes watching this. But you can see from the previous runs, there is a significant improvement in the number of SQL transactions that can be processed in the same amount of time. And in this case, the number of orders that can be processed over that SQL database when Velocity is installed. So I'm, what I'm going to do is actually run this test twice. One with Velocity running on this machine on the left, and I'll record that data. And then when that's done, I'll run the same test again, but I'll stop Velocity on this machine on the left, and I'll have it running on the machine on the right. I think that then should really prove that it's Velocity that's making the difference rather than some smoke and mirrors test. I, I, I want to try and keep this as scientific as possible. So let's flip over to HammerDB and we'll get the test running. So start it there and start it there. And you'll be able to see the, the transaction counter, which will show us the current average SQL transactions per minute as we're doing the test. Now, I won't expect you to uh, <laughs> sit through all the minutes required for this test to run. So what I'll do is uh, I'll speed up this part of the video and uh, I'll come back to you when the test is run and we'll uh, record the first set of results. All right, so both tests have just completed. Um, so let's go ahead and actually record the results in our spreadsheet here. So this was test run number 11 and so let's see, this is the machine that didn't have Velocity running. Remember, the, the service has been stopped. 
So let's put that data in first. You can see here the number of, hopefully it's not too small, but I'm, I'm going to put it into the spreadsheet anyway to make it a bit bigger. But you can see here the number of, or sorry, the average SQL Server transactions per minute. So that's about 110,000. And here are the number of orders per minute that were able to be processed. So let's tap that data into the spreadsheet. So 110753. And orders processed was 241, oh, sorry, 24161. So that's 24,161 orders processed per minute. Now, on the machine that did have velocity running and active, we had 147,261 SQL transactions per minute, so definitely more there. And orders processed was 32,099. So, yeah, that's just over a 30% improvement on the machine that had Velocity running. So what I'm going to do now, just to try and make this test as scientific as possible, is I'm going to stop the Velocity service running on this machine on the left. There we go. That's now stopped. And on the machine on the right, I'm going to start the Velocity service. And now the machine on the right, when I run the test again, should be the one that has more SQL transactions processed and more orders processed uh, by HammerDB. Now, for those of you who would just simply like to try the software, um, you know, if, if this is compelling enough that it's worth taking a look at, if you have, if you go and open up a browser and go to conducive dot com forward slash try you'll see this page here and there's a little form you can fill out here and you'll get a link to download the velocity software that will run fully featured for 30 days as simple as that and there are no code changes required there's no reboots required it's completely non-disruptive it'll take you a couple of minutes to download it and install it and you can install and uninstall at will um, so really, you've got nothing to lose to, to try it. Just um, download it and see what it can do for your real-world workloads. And uh, yes, I'm using SQL Server here um, to uh, be the back end for HammerDB in my tests here. But it doesn't just work with SQL. Um, you know, SQL Server, SQL Express, MariaDB, MySQL, Oracle... If your database is running on Windows, you'll be able to install the Velocity software and you'll be able to see these types of performance boosts for yourself using your real world environment and running your real world workloads. Just think what what improvement that would have for the applications that your users are using that interface with that database back end. So yeah, uh, go to conducive.com slash try, get the 30 day trial where and see what it can mean for you and for your organization. So back to the test. Um, let's get this test running again. So we'll start it there and we'll start it there. Let's have a look at those transaction counters. Make sure that starts running on both. I'm sure it will. Let that ramp up. Good. Okay. So we'll run the test again, this time with Velocity active on the other machine. Just really to prove that it is velocity that's making the difference. And then we'll record the results in our spreadsheet at the end and have a look and see in the in the 12 runs that I've done, in the 12 tests that have been performed, what the average percentage improvement has been. So again, I'll speed this part of the test up so you're not sitting here <laughs> for about seven minutes watching a, a graph populate and we'll we'll check the results at the end. Okay, so the second test run is complete. Let's uh, have a look at the data. So, this machine on the left was the one where velocity was disabled. You can see the velocity service still stopped. It wouldn't have been able to do anything. So, let's type in the data there. So, we've got 113,985 SQL transactions per minute. And the number of orders processed per minute was 24,743. And on the machine with Velocity active this time, it was 171,668 SQL transactions per minute. 
and 37,272 orders processed per minute. Wow, an even bigger increase that time. So, as you can see, I've done a number of runs. That was run number 12. Uh, let's make that nice and big so we can see that. So you can see that in each of the runs, and by the way, I was alternating which machine was running velocity each time. Um, you can see in every single run, a significant number more orders were able to be processed by this e-commerce type workload when velocity was active. And for you SQL DBAs out there, significantly more SQL transactions were able to be processed in the same amount of time when Velocity was active. So really, I would urge you, just try it for yourself. Remember, you can go to conducive.com slash try, grab a, a copy for yourself that'll run fully featured for 30 days, see what difference it can make to the performance of the databases that underpin your applications. See what, see what it can do for you. If you have any questions about the test methodology and setup, I am going to be writing a blog uh, to accompany this video as well. And I'm going to be posting that on my LinkedIn page. Um, let me show you my LinkedIn address. Here we go. Um, let's make that a bit bigger. So linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash sj allingham that's my linkedin profile you'll be able to see it there um it'll be posted i guess in the in the next few days uh be available there's plenty of other blogs and articles there to look at as well in the meantime <laughs> if you if you're a sucker for punishment um yeah also if you have any questions um and you want to talk to me directly or, or reach out or even just email me um you can reach out to me using my direct email address, sallingham at conducive.co.uk. I would genuinely be delighted to, to hear from you. Um, more than happy to help if there are any questions that you have or anything that I can help with. So, uh, yeah, please feel free to reach out. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you think.